You talked about what it means to make an Amazon show and knowing, knowing when they come in that it's at. You, you've talked a little bit about you got to know what the, what the ending is. You can't, you don't want to be like, oh, whatever you guys want. You want somebody who has a firm hand, uh, knows what they're doing. Um, what, what's been the reaction to that? In, I mean, it must be, I'm just going to guess here, it must be a pretty great feeling out in the creative community. So how is Amazon Studios... How does it, how do, what's the vision out there, or what's the reputation, do you think, from your side of the of the? Yeah, I mean, it's probably hard for me to say, just because I'm so inside of it. I, right. You know, I mean, listen, we say no to, he, I mean, forget buying pitches, hearing pitches. I mean, we just don't, we have a good sense of what's for us. Um, so I think in some ways there's a frustration that, like, I want to take the show out to 10 networks, but Amazon's this, you know, anomaly looking for something different. Um, that's probably frustrating, but... The upside is the creative freedom that people are given, the budgets that they're given. Um, I just think the people that I like to be in business with are really excited about telling new stories, telling things differently, and we give them not just the platform, but the option. I'll have a conversation with someone. How do you, you know, are we going to binge release the show? Maybe is there some other way to do it? Is it one a week? Is there some? Um, again, I think there'll be new ways to release things too. Um, I don't think we magically, or I don't know that we magically hit it the first time we came up with a new way, which is give everything at once. And um, the creators are always part of that conversation. You know, never do we say, here's your marketing campaign. Here's the way it's happening. Uh, I'm so uh, into input from these people because I'm lucky to work with, the, you know, these geniuses. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to take advantage of them. Well, it's it's funny too, uh, or interesting, I should say, on that as a, somebody who's, creating all this content, you, you do actually have very strict or clear rules about what you want. Earlier, you basically said, broad comedy is not for you. You're not, you're not going to, you, you wanted to have, a, you said nothing that's just joke, 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 not a joke machine. You want to have a little dramatic element to it. Yeah, I mean, and that's not to say we won't ever do broad comedy. Um, you know, my hope is that in the long run, you, every, you can get everything with us. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that dramatic moment makes it make the dramatic moments makes it make it real real people you never know how they're going to act none of us you know are that great at predicting uh, how our friends and family might react 100% of the time um, and I think that's something we're trying to trying to embrace uh, real life is dramatic at times and funny at times and um, you know it was really um, might be a silly thing to cite but I was listening to this, uh, this podcast Radio Lab and there was an episode about um, you know, a, a baby that was born very premature, and uh, the father, who was a neurosurgeon, was reading just reading a story to his you know day old premature baby, and like he could, uh, uh, he might be reading too much into it, but you know every time he would get to the end of a chapter, he literally saw the heart monitor spike, and it was uh, I mean so touching to hear this you know neurosurgeon and father of a child that he didn't know what was going to happen to it say you know it really makes you feel like the essence of life is you know wanting to know what's going to happen next. And you know that's something that I've both made my team listen to, but and we talk about a lot is how do you make, how do you make people want to know what's going to happen next? That feeling at the end of something when you didn't see the end coming, where you just have to know what's going to happen. Oh my God, this character saw that character, and then they cut to black. Um, I'm sure many people here would kill to see one more minute of The Sopranos because uh, you just don't know. And can you create that sort of ambiguity or question? Um, at the end of every episode, or at least enough not to get people annoyed. Uh, that's something we're trying to figure out. Woody Allen has agreed to make a series for Amazon, so. What? That's great. <laughs> uh, although, how, since you're gonna be the person who actually probably takes a look at that, uh, how do you give notes to Woody Allen? I don't think you, I don't, uh, we really don't give a lot of notes. We ask a ton of questions. Um, I rarely, I don't know if I've ever forced someone to do something. I have final cut on everything. I don't think I've ever used it. Um, I just think it's about asking the right questions at the beginning, making sure you have some some vision uh, at the beginning that's uh, mutual with the, with the creators, and then you can always go back to that. Um, but I'm not going to sit up here and pretend that, that I have anything to add to, um, to Woody Allen's filmmaking abilities. Um, I think sometimes you just want to let the creators creators go and you know once in a while you might be able to say I'm not as in it what about this but that's a question right um, but I'm not I would never pretend to know more or tell him what he should do mm -hmm. 
Well, that'll be an interesting situation. Now, how when you're sitting back and, you're, and here's here's you know one of the country's greatest filmmakers, and uh, you've got him, and everybody's writing these things about, oh my God, this wait, we, what do we? He's never done a television like this. What are we, what are we going to see from him? What happens when you sit back and you hear him say, I, I don't know if I can do this. I, I can't believe I said yes. I can't I can't back out now. It'll Oh my God! It's going to be a comic, you know, a cosmic embarrassment. Is that is, is that just Woody being Woody and he's worrying, he's fretting over things, or from your position? Is I it think like, if I uh -oh. hadn't seen any of Woody's movies, uh, it would have been weird that I made the deal, that we made the deal. But um, his movies are about these these neuroses, and uh, I think it's just him. You know, I've uh, last time I met with him, I was in his screening room, and he showed me this is. This is where I edit my movies, and this is where I come and I, and I cry about them. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he's made the most brilliant movies, one a year, sometimes more of the past century. I just think that's the approach, and um, doesn't doesn't worry us at all. I'm, I'm like everyone. I'm just excited to see it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge fan television of him. Um, I'm just very excited to see it. Is is he somebody that that? Um is is just so big. You're like, okay, just make it. And, I mean, yeah. in some ways, yeah. on a much smaller level, but it is also one of the greatest shows on television. That's the kind of what's happening with Louis and FX. It, yeah, it's a good show. Um, yeah, I think the best, you know, the hardest thing as an executive, I think, is to give no notes. Um, hard, both to find those shows and to like, you feel like you want to have an effect on things. And you know, I, I, I. I've been trying to make an active turn against that. I love, I love people like Woody, like Jill, where I can sit back and watch them make their art. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think the more you're able um, to hire, it, it's, it's it's all about hiring. It's the same as being a manager, you know, with a team of people you work with. Mm -hmm. If you hire right, you're amazed by how easy your job is and. How little, how little you're able or you have to do, um, and I'm assuming one of the pitches to Woody that you might, must have said is that, that very thing which you said here, which is about Jill. So it's 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 a movie that we chop up in little bits and and, and present. So it, yeah. did that make him more comfortable? Uh, I don't want to pretend to know what he thought, but you know, we said <laughs> that you know he, he has a lot of creative uh, freedom, you know, to make the kind of story that he wants. Um, and you know, fortunately, we're able to make or produce things at a level that commensurate with his movies, commensurate with most movies, um, and the production values wouldn't suffer. I just think it's a. Um, I mean, listen, we're incredibly lucky that he said yes, and um, don't take it for granted. And I hope that again, there's a lot more of those to come. Uh, there's a, there are very frictionless ways to get a show on the air with us and bring us people like Woody Allen.